Hey guys, Josh with Deptic Channel, and today what we're going to be showing you is my crane, my gantry crane setup. Because you might be wondering, well, you work out of a service van, you don't have a big service truck, how do you lift cylinder heads? It's hard to do a rebuild when you got to pick a 500-pound cylinder head up. Well, I use this mobile gantry crane ser setup I've got here. Uh, it uses a trolley and then this chain fall. And it's pretty cool. So the one I have is a global industrial brand, but Vestal also makes them. I'll put a link uh, to... A certain website that sells pretty much the same thing. Mine's a 12 foot by 12 foot, and the minimum height's nine and a half, uh, but maximum is 12 feet. I usually keep it at the lowest setting though, just easier to set up that way. And yeah, it's all mechanical. There's no electronics, no hydraulics, so it's kind of nice. Once it's set up, it just sits there, and you can use it for a variety of stuff. Now, for lifting the heads, I use a couple of these chain hoists and man i wish i would have known about these didn't really ever use them in vegas i never seen anyone using them but up here guys use them and man they're a game changer for putting cylinder heads on moving stuff around and that works really well just got a couple random lifting links here the h bar style picker that we used to have at cat i may have it'll source one of those it would be nice to have something like that if i could access that but like i said haven't really been able to find that now this is a 10 foot reach chain fall we have here and it's rated everything's rated at one ton or 2,000 pounds and it seems like everything goes in tons so you can get a one ton two ton or three ton and three ton would pretty much let you do everything two ton is kind of a weird spot because if you had a two ton you still i wouldn't feel safe at least picking like a whole 3400 series engine up but usually what I'm doing is just cylinder heads or maybe a radiator or a fan drive or something like that. So the two ton, it's the lightest assembly and you still have a huge safety margin there for picking stuff up like this. You can see this head is all prepped. The customer had painted it already. He did a really good job. He was painting most of the parts. This is the same one, uh, the owner operator's worst nightmare one with the blown head gasket there and the bad cavitation so this is kind of the follow-up to that video but as you can see here, i've got these two purple lifting straps those actually came in a head kit uh, i'd gotten on another job and they i forget the name of the company that makes the heads but they give you these straps with them and yeah so the straps are there i've got two chain hoists here or yeah chain hoist the one is to level it front to back and the other is to level it left to right because the pick point here, there's really no great pick point that'll give it perfectly level because these heads are kind of weird. If the cam's in, one side's heavier. If the turbo's on, one side's heavier. So you need a way to kind of level it out because you don't want the head going on all cattywampus there. If it's not seated properly, it can get hung up on one of the dowels, maybe push one of the water furrows out of the way. Don't want that to happen. So we're getting it prepped here. And here's one thing. The newer cat head gaskets come with these, I believe they're technically called oil funnels. And it's supposed to help prevent oil leaks between the spacer plate here. So they basically sit in these five oil holes there in the spacer plate. And they seem to help quite a bit since they came out. You can see the new cylinder packs there. And we're getting ready to set the head on. You can see the head there to the right being hung in. You can see the head gasket, spacer plate, all that has been put on i've got two alignment studs here so what they are is old head bolts i'd cut the heads off them years ago they were old junky head bolts but clean them up as best i could cut the heads off and yeah they work really well for aligning the head while it's setting down there and they give you probably about six inches of clearance of contact with the head before it contacts the head gasket so you can see the cam's already in. Uh, this cam was being reused. Most of the time, the C15 or 3400 series cam can be reused. They're usually in pretty good shape. We're just repositioning the gantry crane here. It's nice to have two guys to help move it, because if you are trying to move one side and then the other by yourself, that can be a little interesting. And you can see the paint job. He got a little crazy with the paint here. He kind of painted into the ceiling areas where the gaskets go for the exhaust manifold but before putting that on he uh scraped that off and we yeah we put it on without the exhaust manifold he had some ac lines that were in the way and it's nice having this crane because like i said it's there's no electronics there's no hydraulics once it's set up which you can actually do by yourself takes me about half an hour or about five minutes with two guys it's pretty nice it's ready to go for the entire job getting the head off getting it on 
since I'm usually doing only one job at a time, it enables me to set it up and yeah, do the whole job basically without having to mess around with it again. One thing I do wanna point out, this plug right here, that is a plug that you definitely do not wanna miss. I've seen it got missed a few times. It actually seals off your main oil gallery in the head. And if you miss it and don't put it on, you'll have a huge oil leak. And the problem is that is where the front structure seals also. So you would either have to pull the cylinder head back off or pull the front structure, neither which you wanna do. So we're, we are down to the nitty gritty here, folks. We're gonna start lowering it down. One thing I don't like too much is the chain mechanism. It, not that it's not smooth, it's just the chain is really long. It's a 10 foot fall for the chain mechanism. And since the height of the crane's only nine and a half, it's, it's just kind of long. I wish it was only maybe five feet, but what are you gonna do? I guess I could shorten it if I wanted to, but I don't really wanna mess with any of the mechanism or anything like that. And one other thing, I'm not sure if they make a lifting link. If someone knows of a lifting link manufacturer for the C15 heads that works, this setup does work that I have here and it's kind of universal for any head, but if you know of a manufacturer that makes a C15 lifting link, uh, not the factory ones on the end, I'm talking about something that is just for lifting and head on and then taking back off, uh, let me know. It would be nice to not have this kind of universal setup with different lengths and chains and stuff. It works, but I don't mind spending the money on something that would make the job a little more uh, easier. Not that I do this every single day, but I'm lifting heads more often than not. So yeah, once the, uh, the head bolts are engaged there already, you're just slowly setting it down. And you want to make sure you're not pinching anything. Pinching a line, pinching a hose, pinching wires, anything like that. But... Usually once the head bolts are engaged there, you're good to go. And they were, you can see it's pretty much seated right now. He's just lowering it down the rest of the way. And yeah, once it's seated, make sure it's on the dowels and yeah, you're good to go. And most of the stuff I'm using is jet branded. The chain hoists are my trolley's jet as well as the chain fall itself. Like I said, the actual crane itself is a global industrial, but there's a few manufacturers, Vestal's another one. And the whole setup only weighs about 200 pounds. I don't mean the, the beam itself. The beam's only about 100 pounds. Like I said, you could set this up yourself, and I'm not eight feet tall or anything like that. Pretty much all you need is a ladder. Uh, that works the best. So yeah, once that's set on there, you can see I've got the overhead back on, and what I'm doing here is I'm checking our valve lash on the cylinder where at first we couldn't adjust it. And look at that, adjusted up fine. So he is back together. So we're getting there folks. Heads on, valve covers are on, oil pans on. One thing that would be tricky without our friend the crane would be the fan drive. So the fan, as you can see, is pretty much all the way down. The reason it needed to be is to get the peanut cover on and off and get the cam gear in and out. The fan hub is quite heavy and you have to hold it up and then if you look, there's a red line there that needs to line up with this red line. So it needs to come up about four or five inches, but it's hard to get that part up and get the bolts in. A couple different ways to do it, but having the crane here, it's gonna help quite a bit. So as you can see here, we got our fan drive back lined up where it was supposed to be. So that's just another feature of having the uh, crane there that some of you might not think about, and there's other ways to do it, but just having it there already set up, it made it a lot easier. And what we're doing here is people have asked me, do you pressure prime your engines? Yes, I do. So I've got a whole video on how to do this and my tank setup, but basically I usually go to the oil supply line to the air compressor and push oil back in new oil into the engine. Oh, it fired right up there. And you might be saying, did it really start that easy? Well, actually, no. That was the second time we went to try and start it. The first time, I was holding my camera and I thought I pushed record, but I didn't push record. I thought I did though. So yeah, this crane's still set up there. Just wanted to make sure. Had a little coolant leak at the upper radiator hose. It was a pain in the butt to get the seal. I don't know if something's wrong with the hose, but finally was able to find the correct spot after about 300 times of moving that clamp around. Customer got his engine back together, running real good. 
He's happy. Everyone's happy. How about a little destruction of the week? Our first destruction of the week comes from Dean, and this looks like something out of some Discovery Channel show about gold prospectors, but no, folks. This is a Cummins oil pan. This is a number two rod failure. I'm not sure why it looks so gold, but man, big time problem there when that is in your oil pan, folks. Too bad. Next one is from Jackson, and Jackson... So this is a C13. I have never seen a cam failure quite this deep before with the outer profile. The cam is still there. They kept running the C13, though, until it eventually dropped the valve, broke a hole in the piston where you could see the connecting rod through. Thanks for watching.